Coming up on BCN Today. Police investigate an apparent murder on Lethbridge's west side. Plus, two groups of Canadian evacuees from Wuhan, China, have now returned to Canada. And seven Canadians have tested positive for coronavirus on a cruise ship quarantined off of Japan. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello, thanks for joining us on this Friday. Lethbridge police are investigating an apparent homicide following an incident at a West Side home last night. Just after 10.30 p.m., police responded to a report of a shooting at a residence along the 200 block of University Drive West. Upon arrival, officers located the body of a 35-year-old man inside the home. Investigators have determined this was not a random incident and the indiv individuals are known to each other. Police are on the scene at the University Drive home as well as a second residence along Henderson Lake. Boulevard. There's no evidence to suggest any ongoing risk to neighbors or the public at either location. The man's body will be transported to the medical examiner's office in Calgary for an autopsy later today. And in a separate incident, Lethbridge police seized over $10,000 worth of drugs from a Southside hotel room and a 37-year-old man has been charged with drug trafficking. On February 4th, police executed a warrant at the Travel Lodge Hotel on Mayor McGrath Drive South. 37-year-old Kevin Paul Rabo was found to be in possession of methamphetamine, carfentanil, and crack cocaine with a street value of more than $10,000. In addition, police seized a can of pepper spray, brass knuckles, drug paraphernalia, and more than $7,000 in cash. Uh, Rabo was taken into custody and will appear in court later on today. Two groups of Canadian evacuees from Wuhan, China have now returned to Canadian soil. A flight carrying 176 from the center of the novel coronavirus outbreak arrived at Ontario's Canadian Forces base in Trenton this morning. 39 more Canadians arrived in Vancouver on an American chartered flight and will be also brought to CFB Trenton. The evacuees will be quarantined for two weeks and monitored for signs of the illness, which has sickened thousands and killed more than 600 people in China. Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne says another Canadian chartered flight out of Wuhan is expected to depart on Monday. Health authorities have documented five confirmed cases of the new virus in Canada so far. And yesterday, two more presumptive cases of the coronavirus were diagnosed in British Columbia. Meantime, public health officials and members of the armed forces hope to keep Canadian evacuees from Wuhan as safe and as comfortable as they can while they undergo 14 days of mandatory quarantine to protect against the possible spread of the virus. Uh, media were given a tour of the facilities ahead of the arrival of the, at the Canadian Forces Base in Trenton in southern Ontario. Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health says surveillance for the virus in the province is widening outside of people who have recently traveled to the affected regions of China. Dr. David Williams says that it's now been 14 days, the maximum incubation period for the virus, since some parts of China were quarantined, so anyone returning from those regions would have likely already shown symptoms if they were infected. But more people in Ontario are still being tested each day for the virus, and doctors are asking for patients to be tested who don't strictly meet the case definition of symptoms plus recent travel to the affected area. We have people on investigation, we have people of, I call it, I'm talking about the right term, of interest or clinical significance that um, healthcare professionals for reasons would like to have the novel coronavirus tested because there's something about that that concerns them and maybe related to that. So we can't say, no, we're not going to do it if that's something you feel is necessary. And we're getting more and more of those as part of the rendering or pending tests. So how do we ensure ongoing because of their proximity to the area of concern in Hubei? They may not have had the same impact that the centers did. Nevertheless, uh, they may have had more potential for inadvertent contact and we want to be sensitive of that and how do we handle that in the right way, the most sensitive way, and respecting that these uh, individuals who are coming into Canada would only want what's the best for them, for their family, and for Canada at large. 
Seven Canadians are among over 60 passengers who have tested positive for coronavirus on a cruise ship quarantined off the coast of Japan. Princess Cruises says the quarantine period for more than 3,000 passengers and crew will end on February 19th. Meantime, a second luxury liner has been denied entry to, J to Japan and put under a 14-day quarantine. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says the, uh, the country will also deny entry of foreign passengers on other cruise ships heading to Japan. Alberta Health Services says the outbreak of pertussis, which was declared in October, is over. During this outbreak, there were 34 confirmed cases and two probable cases of whooping cough with no hospitals, hospitalizations or deaths. Of these cases, 16 were not immunized, 9 were partially immunized, and 11 were considered to be up to date for pertussis containing vaccine. The cases were located in Raymond, Lethbridge, Purple Springs, Picture Butte, Nobleford, Bow Island, Tabor, and Diamond City. There were six 63 confirmed cases of pertussis in AHS's south zone during 2019 and 45 confirmed cases in 2018. Alberta health officials have issued a warning after a confirmed case of measles in the Edmonton area. Alberta Health Services have, has released a list of times and places where the person has been over the last several days. Anyone who was at those locations at those times who hasn't received any measles vaccine or who is pregnant, immune compromised, or is under one year of age is advised to call HealthLink at 811. Measles is a highly contagious disease spread easily through the air. The province of Alberta plans to end benefits for spouses and dependents of seniors starting March 1st under the Seniors Drug Benefit Program. We decided to ask how Lethbridge seniors feel about the cutbacks, whether this is an unnecessary hardship or if this is something that makes sense because of the need to reduce the, the need to reduce the overall debt burden. We stopped by the Nordbridge Senior Center to find out. I think they're outlandish and they shouldn't be charging us that much because we we don't have to make that much money. Yes, I think it's a great disaster that he's doing that and a disservice to the uh, seniors that are uh, in the province of Alberta. I, I happen to be lucky because I don't have any dependents to have to worry about. We're both uh, over 65. Yes, I know of people here, we have uh, especially people with lower incomes uh, who are really going to be hurt with this uh, because some of our members here uh, are not that wealthy. BCN's Hal Roberts had the opportunity to chat with Tyler Dawson, the Alberta correspondent for the National Post, about some of the recommendations of an independent audit of Alberta Health Services. About 36, I think, of 83 community hospitals out in smaller centers, is my understanding of it, were not sort of uh, operating up to snuff, really, not as, not as good as they ought to be, not as effective, what have you. So the recommendation was, in fact, that five of those hospitals be closed. Now, Health Minister Tyler Shandro coming out and saying, nope. We are not going to close hospitals. What we might do is repurpose them in some way. You can watch that entire interview with the in, in, in the second half of today's program. Police in Calgary are encouraging babysitters to screen phone calls following reports of a man making lewd calls to young girls. Police say there have been multiple complaints since the beginning of last year about a man calling girls who advertise babysitting services online. The man calls from a blocked number and engages the girls in conversation, but as the chat progresses, the calls become more inappropriate and graphic. The, recipi the recipients have all been between 11 and 16 years old. The police service is urging babysitters not to include a photograph with their listings and not to answer phone calls from blocked or private numbers. Alert organized crime teams from Calgary and Medicine Hat have seized more than a half a million dollars worth of drugs and cash after a search of two homes in the Panorama Hills and Queensland neighborhoods. Two shotguns and two pistols were also found. 
Uh, Tu Sang Wong, a 56-year-old Calgary man, has been charged with a number of criminal offenses. Meanwhile, Medicine Hat Police also made an additional drug bust on Tuesday in a planned traffic stop, seizing 253 grams of methamphetamine with a street value estimated at $15,000. Three Medicine Hat individuals were arrested. Not everybody has a place to go for a hot meal, and we know that the Lethbridge Soup Kitchen is always there, along with their dedicated volunteers who work hard every day to change that. BCN's Loris Alexander stopped by to speak with a volunteer group to find out why there's never too many cooks in the kitchen. As the number of those in need continues to increase, so does the need for helping hands. For the Lethbridge Soup Kitchen, they have their work cut out for themselves. But when it comes to volunteers, age is but a number. It's not just, quote, a bunch of old people that come to volunteer. It's young people. It's students. It's hockey players. It's whoever. It's politicians. It's groups representing the local nurses. I mean, I could name so many. And what I like about that is it provides uh, some variety for people that are being served by different people. John Vanderholst is the leader heading a team of volunteers from the First United Church one of several groups working to curb a growing need. You meet a lot of different people, a lot of nice people. Uh, their clients are, they're all different. I do have a niece that comes in here. Uh, she's been on the street for six years. Um, it's humbling to see her on the street. It brings tears to my eyes, actually. The hard work and dedication of the volunteers doesn't go unnoticed. To some, it means more than we will ever understand. They are the nicest people in the world. I got up the other morning, and at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, we had seven, eight-year-old kids sitting there serving us. And you know what? I, I, I felt very deep-hearted about that, and I thought it was, you know what, the coolest thing in the world, that those young kids would come out and do that for us. For Bridge City News. I'm Loris Alexander. Thank you, Loris. Lethbridge Food Bank received a welcome donation of $50,000 from the Evangelical Free Church. Every year, the church runs something called the Advent Conspiracy Campaign, which encourages church members to resist consumerism over the Christmas season and instead make a donation to help those in need. This year, the funds will go to the Mindful Munchies program, which is run by My City Care and the Food Bank. 19 local schools are served over 1,500 lunches every week through the program. Large crowds of elementary school teachers took to the picket lines in downtown Toronto on Thursday. Police say a crowd of roughly 2,000 people braved the cold and snow as job action by elementary school workers escalated to a province-wide strike Thursday. We are proud to stand for classrooms. We are proud to stand for our students and for the future of public education. We're here to tell this government we will not be moved. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is asking mayors of Canada's big cities to lobby conservative members of the Parliament of Parliament over the new North American free trade deal. Trudeau told a gathering of mayors in Ottawa that in misinformation about the pact could delay its ratification in Parliament. On the NAFTA front, uh, as we move forward for ratification, I mean, you'll all know uh, how important it is to continue uh, strong free trade with the United States. Uh, I will highlight that there are certain messages that could be passed uh, to uh, some parties that uh, might be playing uh, some challenging games uh, around delaying NAFTA. There was a, a near miss yesterday because of some conservatives at committee. So uh, those of you who can pass along messages to uh, some of uh, the conservatives MPs who you work with, that would be uh, appreciated. One of the things, as the Prime Minister said, that I think we do look forward uh, to talking about and where I think we have worked together extraordinarily effectively as a country is on the new NAFTA. And we do look forward to talking to you about getting through the final push. I think it's going to be really, really valuable for all of us and for all of the people we work for. Absolutely, there can be no games played with free trade. It's too important to our businesses and workers and our communities and mayors have worked with your government too hard for there to be any delays 
or any partisan nonsense with respect to the rapid adoption of NAFTA. So congratulations on securing that. The mayors are solidly with you on that issue. A delegation of Canadian premiers will head to Ottawa this weekend to bolster cross-border business ties. U.S. Donald, US President Donald Trump signed the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement into law last week. Well, lots of weather warnings are happening today across the country and particularly out east. But as for Lethbridge, we do have a 30% chance of snow in the forecast. A full look at our weather is coming up right after the break. And welcome back. Here's a look at our weather highlights for today and tomorrow in Lethbridge. We're expecting a 30% chance of flurries later on today into tonight and also into tomorrow, Saturday, a 30% chance of flurries as well. High today, zero, low overnight, uh, minus three this evening and into tomorrow, minus three for Saturday as well. Looking ahead to the five day forecast, lots of sunshine coming at us for Sunday and Monday. Two is the high for Sunday, zero the high for Monday. And then four degrees is the high for Tuesday. However, we're gonna be seeing rain turning to freezing rain and possibly snow on Tuesday with increasing cloud for Wednesday. Temperature dropping to minus four and dropping even further for Thursday of a minus 11 degrees. The average highs and lows for this time of year, zero being the high, low temperatures being the minus 12. We're basically staying in that range, sometimes going a bit higher. 19 degrees was the high temperature on this day in 1954. And it was a chilly minus 34 back in 1994. That was a low temperature on this day. The sun rose this morning at 7.56 a.m. and will be setting right after 5.30 this evening. Now, looking across the nation, lots of weather warnings in effect, including Victoria for today. They have a wind warning of 70 kilometers per hour, uh, along with rain. Showers also expected in Vancouver. Minus one expected in Calgary. Same thing, actually one degree expected for Edmonton. Lots of snow across the prairies today, including Alberta, Saskatchewan. Uh, Saskatoon's high, minus five. Minus five also expected in Regina. Winnipeg, though, their temperature is dropping to minus 18, which is very chilly, but it's under a beautiful, bright blue sky. Now, lots of uh, weather warnings are in effect here as well. Ottawa's got a rain warning in effect with, uh, at times, heavy rains. Uh, actually, snow, I'm sorry, it's a snow warning. Uh, same thing for Montreal. Minus six are the highs in those cities. Minus five is the high for Toronto. They're expecting snow as well. Lots of rain expected across the Eastern Maritimes section here. Halifax will be seeing rain, sometimes freezing rain. Same thing for St. John's. They could be expecting ice pellets as well. Lots of rain expected as well in Charlottetown, 20 to 25 millimeters as well. And tons of wind as well. Uh, they're going to be seeing gusts 90 to 110 kilometers per hour. There you go. That's your weather. Here's the ski report. Here's the BCN ski report. No new fresh snow at Marmot Basin, but they do have a 135 centimeter base. Two new centimeters of the white stuff at Castle Mountain with a 208 centimeter base. Sunshine Village has had seven centimeters of new with a 165 centimeter base. Lake Louise has had two centimeters of fresh powder with a 160 centimeter base. Mount Norquay has had three centimeters of fresh powder and a 91 centimeter base. One new centimeter of fresh snow in Akiska and a 106 centimeter base. No new snow at Whistler, but they do have a 248 centimeter base. Panoramas had three centimeters of fresh snow and a 127 centimeter base. Whitefish, six centimeters of fresh powder and a 305 centimeter base. It's now time for your daily life hack, which will come handy while using cooking oil. Do you want to reuse the oil without uh, tasting like you previously cooked it? Cook a quarter inch piece of ginger in it. This will remove any previous flavors or odors from it. There you go, that's been your daily life pack. I will certainly have to try that one. And if you don't plan on uh, staying inside, if you do plan on staying inside this weekend instead of hitting the slopes, you might want to check out what's happening on this silver screen. Here is Len Binning with your Movie Mill Minute. Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan star in the amazing true story, Just Mercy. It focuses around a young lawyer who, upon graduation, embarks upon a path to defend those who have been wrongfully convicted. If we can look at ourselves closely, 
we can change this world for the better. We all need grace. We all need mercy. Amen. Kristen Stewart stars in the adventure film Underwater. Disaster strikes when an earthquake hits six miles under the ocean, and now they need to escape. Well, this weekend the Oscars go, and at the Movie Mill we have three best pictures currently playing. Ford vs. Ferrari, The Amazing Jojo Rabbit, and Parasite, my personal favorite. Home renovations can be stressful, but turning to salvage yards and, and stores like Habitat for Humanity's Restores can ease some strain on the pocketbook. Restore Vice President Rob Lee says the more than 100 stores across Canada can allow homeowners to save a lot of money while those who donate old kitchens, appliances, and other materials earn tax receipts. Customer Dennis O'Keefe says there are great deals to be had, but he warns do-it-yourselfers to know your limits and avoid electrical and plumbing. We are a, you know, a store filled with great items at great prices. And so we are this solution for people that are taking out perhaps kitchens, appliances, doors and windows, uh, bathrooms that are still have a lot of life left in and a lot of value. And we take that and we uh, resell it. Um, and those people uh, who are renovating can come in and purchase those items and put some really unique, great items into their homes. So with our deconstruction, one of the great things about it is you do get a tax receipt for what we sell the items for in a store. Uh, and that can directly use, you know, help save you money. So not only are you not paying for the disposal costs, the removal costs, we're also going to give you a charitable tax receipt that you can use to save some money at, on the taxes. It's based on what we can sell it for in the store, so it's the actual value. Um, there's kitchens that we know cost, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars to, you know, put in a home. Maybe we sell them for, you know, eight thousand or ten thousand. That tax receipt would go to the uh, the homeowner. Okay, so you can save some money that way you too. Save, you can save a lot of money that way. Old stuff. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, and you're not you don't have the expense of getting the dumpster outside. Uh, you know, and having to pay someone or even you pay yourself the time to remove it all. And also you have that conscious that, you know, you're helping the environment by, you know, recycling these items and, and extending the life of them. First of all, they have to see what they need, you know, obviously. And come here first. Come to one of these locations first because it is amazing what you can get here. And reuse it. Instead of being a disposable society, which is what we are, it's nice to reuse things. Refinish them, place, spend some time on them. Fit them in. If you're a handy guy at all, you can do it yourself. It's very, very easy. You shouldn't attempt, you shouldn't attempt things that, you're, that you can't. Just because you see it, it looks easy on TV, it's not, it's, it's not easy. So don't attempt things that are over the top. But never do plumbing by your, with yourself. Never do electrical by yourself. Always get a qualified guy to do that. Always. But installing cabinets and stuff like that, that's, that's fairly, fairly straightforward. U.S. scientists say high water levels are wreaking havoc for communities along the Great Lakes, which are bursting at the seams less than a decade after bottoming out. Homes and businesses are experiencing more flooding, roads and sidewalks are crumbling, and beaches are washing away. Researchers say the warming climate has likely led to the region's wettest period in more than a century. Forecasters expect the lakes to remain high well into 2020. The Associated Press's Mike Householder reports. Workers are making renovations to Joe Bozinski's home. We have a nice lot on Lake Erie here and we figured in the future, my wife and I will probably retire down here in the next few years. But before they move in, the house needs to move up. It's always a concern because you want to make sure that you know, your house doesn't flood in the future. Flooding is a concern in Luna Pier, Michigan, because its neighbor, Lake Erie, like the other four Great Lakes, is bursting at the seams. A prolonged spell of wet weather produced some of the highest levels on record in 2019, and forecasts suggest much of the same is in store for this year. Things are no better on the other side of the state, where erosion has eaten away at the Lake Michigan shoreline. One house overlooking the lake recently toppled from a bluff, 
and others, including Rita Alton's, are vulnerable. At some point, I'm going to have to leave because it's going to go over, and I won't have a choice. Scientists say the suddenness and severity of the recent ups and downs could be a grim sign of things to come. And be prepared for a similar situation as what you've seen either last year uh, or potentially worse. Which is why Luna Pierce Mayor is encouraging residents to take a cue from the Bozinski's. The best thing they can do is to elevate your house, get it above the floodplain. And out of harm's way. Mike Householder, Luna Pier, Michigan. Tamara LaRue is the author of the book, Second Chance at Heaven, and shared part of her amazing story of surviving a suicide attempt. When I took that 38 caliber gun and placed it at my chest and the gun went off, I experienced becoming blind and becoming deaf, and my soul left my body, and I began traveling faster than the speed of light, and I began falling and falling and falling, and I landed in this place it, it, it was hell, and many people doubt that the place exists, but I am here to testify that it is a very real place. Hal Roberts has that interview coming up, but first, here's a look at what's happening in our community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. WordBridge is hosting the second annual Lethbridge Writing Conference, taking place February 7th and 8th. The conference will feature Order of Canada recipient and award-winning author Robert J. Sawyer and local author Thorsten Nash. Learn everything you want to know about writing from professional writers. For tickets and details about the full schedule, visit wordbridgeconference.com. Come for a fun evening filled with musical entertainment to the Lethbridge Community Brass Choir's Brass Day Concert featuring international trumpet soloist and jazz artist Rex Richardson on Saturday, February 29th, beginning at 7 p.m. at College Drive Community Church. Tickets are $15 and free for children under 12. Purchase yours today at CASA or visit lcbs.yapcity.com. For details, go to lcbs.ca. The Kinsman Club of Lethbridge invites you to their 6th annual Mardi Gras Charity Gala on Saturday, March 14th at the Sandman Signature Lethbridge Lodge. The evening begins at 5 p.m. where you can enjoy the ambiance of the French Quarter, which will feature a five-course Cajun meal, games and entertainment, a silent auction, dance and much more. Early bird tickets are $72 and can be purchased at eventbrite.ca. Proceeds to go towards the Ready, Set, Go Back to School Fair. For details, visit the Kinsman Club of Lethbridge's Facebook page. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.